Hello class, this is a quick update for um, fall term 2018 for the new project one that will take place in the San Pasquale Valley. There's just a few differences in the operations between this semester and last semester, so I'm making this quick addendum video uh, to guide you through the uh, initiation of project one for this term. Please do watch the video from last semester, however, because it will also talk about how to download data from uh, earthexplorer.gov. Uh, uh, we're just going to focus on digitizing. In this case, we're going to digitize vector lines. Now, uh, before I do that, I'm just going to show you my file structure. So here's my base file for my computer. And in my documents folder, I have made a master GIS data folder. I just called it ANTH 583 GIS data. Now, I personally have tons and tons of different kinds of GIS data, so I'm just separating out the data that we're using for class from some of my other, um, other kinds of projects. And if I open this up, you'll see that I'll have a, a, a GRASS data folder that we'll, we'll get to a little later in the term, and then a QGIS data folder as well. So if I open that up, each one of these, as I mentioned in class, is a separate GIS project. They will have separate project files, uh, separate raster, separate vector, whatever it is, all within each one of these folders. Um, so for example, we have our Talgar project, which we did last semester, and we have the project files, raster, vector, etc., under there. And then we have some other supplementary information in here that I'm sort of keeping like, maybe one level nested down. Um, here is our San Pasquale data that you downloaded directly from Blackboard. It looks exactly like this. Once you unzip, you know, if you just download the zip file, you got to unzip first, extract here or whatever it says on your operating system, and then you get these things here. And in here you have your project file, your raster, and your vector. Now you can start QGIS by double-clicking on the project file. I happen to have QGIS already open in the background, and there are a variety of ways we can do that. We can navigate here. If we keep it in a sensible place, uh, for example, home, documents, GIS data, QGIS data, San Pasquale, SPV survey, and then S there. It's not so bad to navigate here. You can also go to project open and then navigate through a normal file dialog. Once you find this, you just click on it or double click on it, and we get basically what we were looking at last week, the project file. Now, um, there are a couple of ways you can go about doing your survey. Um, you've got used to this data, you've zoomed in, you've looked at these things, you load it in. So um, I should note, see now we have this project home. We had just home before. But once we open a project file, we have a new sort of base starting just wherever the project file is and below. This is why we organize our projects the way I just showed you. Um, and you remember we have another vector, the uh, actual survey database from uh, from when we were out in the field, right? And I showed you last time how to uh, double click on it and then go from line to simple line to change the pen width and perhaps the color. Um, there are a variety of ways to change the color. I'm just going to make mine red real quick and a little thicker. I'll hit apply to see that it looks OK. And then I'll hit OK, right? So I'm just going to work with this little area here just to give you an example of what we will do. The first thing that we want to do is to just uh, like we did last week, was just to see how far we can zoom in before features start look, looking unrecognizable. And uh, down here at the bottom, we see the coordinate, but we also see the scale, 1 to 353. And we talked about scale in class on Tuesday and what that means, right? So essentially, once we, the smaller the scale, so 1 to a smaller number, the more zoomed in, I guess, you can think of. Uh, and as we get to a much smaller scale, we start to be able to see the individual pixels. And once we get to a real small scale, we really can't differentiate very much. I mean, we can see that this is red and that this is sort of beige, uh, but we don't know what the red is anymore because there's no clues for us, no visual clues for us to figure out what this might actually be. Uh, we have a couple of tools that we can use to just figure out you know, exactly how zoomed in we are and to measure a few things. So up here we have the measure line tool and we can actually measure a pixel by clicking once and twice. And we can see that our pixels are about 
half a meter or so. Um, that's this, this number right here, half a meter or so. So that's our actual uh, fixed resolution of our raster map is about half a meter. So that means we have to be at a scale when we're looking at the image uh, much more than zoomed in to half a meter to be able to distinguish features, right? So half a meter is the pixel size. The scale's got to be bigger, like maybe five, ten meters, so for us to basically figure out what's going on. And here we have one to 88. So basically, um, 88 meters in the real world would equal one meter on my um, computer screen at this particular moment. That's how you read the scale. And this. For this particular object, it's probably a decent scale, but we may want to work a little zoomed out because some of these other ones are a little bit harder to, to, to find you know, or to distinguish between the background, right? And as you zoom out, oh, it becomes clear. The contrast, the shapes, and all that kind of stuff become clear. Here I'm at a scale of 1 to 353, and that is pretty pretty close, I think, to, to what I want to be working with. I can zoom in a little bit, I can zoom out a little bit just to get some clarity or some maybe some detail if possible, but this seems to be pretty good for my purposes here. Again, it's up to you, it's up to your eyesight <laughs> and your abilities to distinguish uh, features from non-features. So once we've zoomed around, we've figured out what things are pretty much, um, we're going to want to start to digitize. And the first thing we have to do there is to add a brand new layer. So we want to go to the layer menu, create layer, and then we're going to work with a shape file layer. This is, like I said, the most common, probably still vector format. Probably Spatialite is going to be the next most common one. Uh, and it does have quite a few benefits. But because shape files are so common, we're just going to start with that. It's sort of the, the lowest common denominator for us. So we just click that and we get this dialog for new shapefile layer. The first thing we want to do is to check that we want it to be a line vector layer. Shapefiles don't let you combine different uh, geometry types, the three types being point, line, and polygon. So you have to choose uh, line, and then you'll only be able to digitize lines in this shapefile. If you wanted to do polygons or points, you have to make a new shapefile. Other vector formats are not so picky. They may let you do different kinds of geometry within them, and that's a big advantage. Um, but for now, we're just going to stick with lines. Uh, notice that it's got a, a, a CRS of 4326 already picked, and that is the project's CRS file. Uh, we could leave it as such. Um, we could also potentially pick a different CRS, including particularly um, UTM zones. So if I go over to, let me just close this dialog for now, to project and then uh, project properties, we can figure out what we're in. So right now we're in 4326. 4326, now I told you EPSG is the organization that sort of standardizes the different CRSs. Now I've done this enough to where I know that this is latitude and longitude. Uh, basically an unprojected coordinate system in the WGS84 um, datum, basically the WGS84 ellipsoid. Uh, and it says down here, projection is long lat or latitude longitude plus the WGS84 definition and no other changes, right? Um, so at this particular moment, we know that the project is in latitude longitude, so probably it's best at this moment to also digitize in latitude longitude. And if we wanted to go into UTM later to do some more complex uh, math with our output, we would then reproject this data. So let's get back to where we were layer, create layer, new shape file line. Now, at this point, it says new field, and these are. Um, database fields where you can enter information. So these are like the attribute table. And if we recall from project one, we are going to have two kinds of attribute data. We have one that's going to be called type, and it is going to be a um, text data field of 10 characters in length. And the second one will be called condition, and it will be set as an integer numbers data field. right? So let's set that here. We'll call the first one type. We will leave it as text data. We'll give it the length of 10. Now the length here is literally the number of characters that it will allow you to enter. 
And the only reason to change this is that it saves some space on your computer hard disk. You can make this huge if you wanted to. It gets a little unwieldy because it actually displays the, the, the size of the field according to the number of characters. So I like to set it pretty close to the maximum number of characters we're going to use in our codes, which are over here. And we're not going to use more than 10 letters, so that's fine. Once we have this set up, we'll hit Add to Fields List, and we'll see it show up down here. Type and string length 10. Now we're going to add condition. So I'm going to type that in here. I'm going to change text data to whole number. And we can leave it as 10, but technically we only need one uh, at this particular point because our codes are just 1, 2, 3, right? If we were going to go up past 10 or 20 or 100, we'd want to give it 3, 4, 5, whatever uh, number of um, uh, digits we wanted to have there. So we're going to hit that, and we see that added to field code here. Now, very importantly, you got to do this first to add the fields, and then click OK. And now is when we will get to uh, name our new vector folder uh, file. So here's our project uh, file over here. Uh, I guess got to make sure. Looks like I'm pointed in a little bit of the uh, 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 an older place. So just make sure you're going to exactly where you want to save it. This is documents, and 583 GS data, QGIS data, San Pasquale, SPV survey, and then we're going to put this in the vector folder. And before we hit save, I'm going to move my head down just a little bit. We're going to actually create a new folder. And the new folder, we're going to give it the same name. We're going to give the shape file. And so we're going to call this, um, I'm just going to give it my last name, structures, right? That's what I'm digitizing now. And I'm going to hit Enter. So now I've made a new folder called ULA structures. And I'm going to call my shape file ULA structures as well. And then we're going to hit Save. And then we're done with that. All right, so uh, what we see here is ULA structures shows up now in my Layers panel. There's nothing because there's actually no geometry yet in it, no data whatsoever. It's just a blank lines shape file. In order to start adding geometry, we have to enter into editing mode in QGIS. And we do that by clicking on this yellow pencil. So we have to make sure ULA structures is highlighted, not any of the other layers, because whatever layer is highlighted, that's what we're going to be editing. And then we hit toggle editing. And now we have all of these other tools showing up right here. Uh, here's where you're going to want one of these mice with uh, like three buttons, because it's going to make your life easier. Now, you can do it with the touch panel on your laptop. You can do it with a single button mouse, but it's definitely much easier to do it with the three button mouse. Um, to add a feature, we're just going to click this thing that says Add Feature. Now remember, this is a line shape file, so it's only ever going to let us add lines. Uh, and then to digitize, you just, the cursor, which has now become a crosshair, you just point it at a place where you want to start. You click the left mouse button, and you can see uh, a little red line extending from the point where you clicked to where the cursor is now. And you put it to the next place you want to add a new vertex, and you click. And then again to the next place, and you click. And to the next place, and you click. To the next place, and you click. To the next place, you click. And when you get to the end, you can click and then right click. And when you right click, it closes the feature. Basically, it ends your digitizing. Now, it may look like it disappeared, but it's definitely still there. It'll show up in a second. This is the dialogue to where you get to enter in some uh, data about this particular feature. So ID number, we'll just start with one, and we'll keep incrementing as we go along. Uh, type, remember we have to look at our uh, codes over here. This is a pretty good bet that this is a farmhouse because of the nice tile roof. Uh, it, these other ones are probably more like barns, right? So this is probably the residence, and these are probably other things. I mean, we're assuming some stuff because we can't see it on the ground. So we're just going to go with uh, F house is the code, farmhouse, for this uh, one here. And then the code for condition, we're going to say 1 because this has a fully intact roof. It's not broken down. We can't really tell because we're not there how well maintained the inside is, but we're going to say 1, right? And then we're going to click OK. And now we see the line that we digitized over here. 
and we see all the vertices and we see the arcs and we can actually zoom in. We can see that it's not fully closed. Um, so if we wanted to close it so later we could automatically uh, change it into a polygon, what we're going to do is to um, go up here to the node tool and then we can grab this node here by clicking once and then clicking again and then once we grab it, we can actually hold the mouse button down and we can move it wherever we want. So we can actually move it so it's right over that one. Uh, in this particular case, what I probably want to do is to move the first one like that. And we can make some adjustments here if we didn't quite digitize it perfectly the way we should have. We can move our nodes around. Uh, and now we're not changing any of the data. We're just literally changing some of the geometry around. Um, now, that's good. We did that. Uh, we can digitize another feature now, but before we do that, we're going to want to hit save. Now, very importantly, there are two save buttons. This one is to save the project file, which only saves the pathways to the different layers and the styles that you've applied to them. This one only appears in edit mode and it saves the geometry to the shape file. So do this one as you're digitizing. After every shape, and that way, if the computer crashes or if something happens, you can always go back uh, and get back exactly where you were, and you're not going to lose all of your previous things. So once we do that, we can get another uh, structure over here. I'm going to do this one. I'm going to call this a barn. And you can see I'm just going to digitize to the best of my ability. And I can zoom out. I'm using the mouse scroll wheel to zoom out. And I can zoom in a little bit here. And then clicking the last one, then I, I hit the right mouse button to close it. And here we go. I have enabled uh, a, a feature to get my information from last time in there. And I'll show you how to do that on your version of QGIS. But all we're going to do is now increment our ID number to 2. We're going to change this to our code of barn right here. And then condition is still probably 1 on that one. Okay, and if we look back over here, here we go, we have our barn over here. Um, now, there are some features I hear which you will not be able to identify, like this little thing over here is clearly a man made feature, but what is it? It's too small for the set resolution and the scale that you're able to view it at. Um, this kind of thing over here will be a little hard to distinguish, but um, if you look at it, this is actually a cistern, right? So if we digitize this one right here, like so, we can actually put that in here as a cistern. Just making sure I'm using the right code, cistern over here. And the code for this, it's hard to tell, but still probably one, right? So everything that we're looking at here is pretty much one. Um, other places will be clearly broken down, and let me see if I can find something of that nature. Here's one right here where we can see holes in the roof, right? So this is probably a condition of 2. And then if there was no roof whatsoever and it just looked really broken down, it's a condition of 1. Uh, just really quickly, when you're done editing, you uh, essentially click the same button here, toggle editing, and then it'll ask if you want to save. If you have made a mistake, you can cancel the last thing you did over here. And if you want to move features wholesale, so for example, if I uh, go back to where I was digitizing, which is up here, and I did this and I don't know, it was way off. I can grab this feature here, which is move features, and then I can select this and I can literally drag it around. And again, I'm not messing with the data in the table at this point. I am just messing with the geometry. If I wanted to uh, edit the data in the table, I can do that as well. Uh, Leaving edit mode on, I can right click on my uh, ULA structures file and go down to open attribute table. And because I'm in edit mode, you'll see I have some tools up here, including uh, delete or add fields, which we don't really want to mess with. But I can also go in here and I can edit these things uh, individually. So I can change the condition or I can change, I changed my mind. This is not a barn, this is a farmhouse, right? I can go in there and I can change that after the fact. So I don't have to delete it and redo it, right? And as you go, you'll get uh, um, more of these things and you might be uh, having a hard time remembering which one is which. Um, and remember, if you click on this number over here, 
it will still highlight right in yellow the feature even when you're in edit mode and you can do it through this uh, um, tool as well you can highlight uh, in reverse by clicking on the feature here in the map display and then it will highlight here in the table what it is so using our query tools that we got familiar with we can add and remove information and geometry using the tools that show up in edit mode here and here in the data table themselves and when you're done for the day you hit save and then you stop editing if you didn't hit save and you stop editing it would ask you do you want to save your last edits and of course you'll always answer yes unless you've made a grave mistake and you don't want to save the last thing you did uh, at this point, once you've added all your structures over here, you can start styling this thing as you could style any other vector layer, changing the colors like so, and the line widths like so, and you can click OK and you can see your changes over here. We will get back to the styling and thematic maps next time. So. Uh, watch this video and also watch the video from last semester and I will see you this afternoon.